Welcome back to the dinner table. We're so excited to have Ben Steele here, the Marquette men's basketball beat reporter for the Journal Sentinel. Ben, thanks for coming out to Mequon. Oh, this is awesome. I'm officially at the Murata dinner table. <laughs> It's, I've been waiting on this call like I told you, so I'm excited for this day. I just had to get over my hurt feelings that you guys had Rousey on <laughs> before me. He was our first it guest, was the first right? One? Yeah, yeah he, was, he was our first guest. I understand. <laughs> you got to get pretty far down the list before you, uh, before you get to me, so uh, I no, appreciate it. No, no, no. And uh, this is a little bit, I guess this is not like the real dinner table because we only have water here, as you mentioned. We should have... It's a little early for the wine or the cocktail hour. Maybe we'll have to have Ben back another time yeah. when we can have some real dinner or something. Yeah. <laughs> the Murata After Dark podcast. Yeah, we'll exactly. <laughs> coming next. Yeah, we need that. But thank you for I'm coming I'm not trying out to here. get fired, though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Camp, camp doesn't Cancel. mind. <laughs> All right, so we're coming off the NBA draft. We just had two Marquette players. It's the first time since 2012 that mm -hmm. two Marquette players have been drafted in the same draft in Tyler Kolek and also Iguodaro. First of all, how cool was it just to see them go and hear their names called yesterday? Yeah, it's awesome. Just seeing guys achieve their dream, right? That's mm -hmm. what, what it's all about. I know Tyler was a little disappointed he didn't go in the first round, but still I think they both landed in like really great spots for him. Oso's going back home to Phoenix. Uh, Tyler's going to be in New York playing at Madison Square Garden, an Eastern Conference contender. Yeah. Coach Tibbs, I mean, it's a great landing spot for those. But seeing those guys – just achieve the dreams. That's that's what it's all about. I talked to Shaka last night. He yeah. was on his way home, and he was pretty emotional. It's just like it never gets old for him. Just all the times that they've spent, all the hours that they've spent together mm -hmm. working toward this moment, just to see it finally happen. It's just it's super cool. Shaka's almost got to be like a proud dad, like sending them off to their next journey. Yeah, it's or, like graduation, right? Yeah, like seriously. you've been here for four years, and now you're going on to this next step, chasing the career. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Has Shaka had a player? Go before in the NBA draft. Yeah, oh, he's had a, oh, he's had a bunch. Ton? Yeah, Omax last year. Okay. And then at Texas, yeah, like I mean, Jared Jericho Allen, Sims, Jericho Jared Sims, yeah. Jackson Hayes. I think he had five first round picks, five yeah. or six. Okay. He's had some talent. Okay, yeah. so he's done this before. He's not. It's not his first rodeo. <laughs> yeah. But for Marquette, though, to have yeah. two guys going the same, I think it was what first time since 2012. Yeah, well. DJO yeah. and yeah. 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 Jake cool. Rogers. Let's start with Tyler. Um, were you surprised he didn't go in the first round? I was. I was. Um, I was thinking it was going to be like a top 25, top 20 guy, just the way it was, the momentum was heading. And I actually, I, I always thought that he was going to land at the Knicks. I thought that was a good spot. Really? They had a couple of picks in the 20s. Yeah. That's where I thought he was going to go. Yep. Uh, but it seemed like in the first round, teams were really prioritizing youth and potential, which they usually do. Um, you know, a 23 year old guy like Tyler. You see a guy like Dalton Connect, also a 23 right. guy. He slid down the draft board. I think there were. 20 of the 30 picks in the first round were like 20 years old or younger. So they're it, really prioritizing youth. It's amazing to me how much I feel like a lot of these GMs or these, the guys who are picking in the front office, they overthink it. A little yeah. Bit. Right. I mean, the difference between a 23 year old and, and a 21 year old to me, I'm like, okay, first off, they played a couple more years in college now and they have some experience and then come in and play right away for you. Right. I, I think a lot of this has to do with, you know, people were saying the draft class was down overall, so mm -hmm. people are taking a little some flyers earlier on, hoping that they can maybe have, you know, a guy with a little bit higher ceiling than Tyler. But to me, I'm like, and we'll get into this a little bit later. We talk about the Bucks pick. Yeah, you want a guy that can come in, especially for these right. teams who are picking at the end of the first round. You want a guy who can come in and play right away and yeah. and be who Tyler is for you, a consistent point guard who can run the offense, mm -hmm. not going to turn the ball over. You know exactly what you're going to get from Tyler. Right take some of these 19 year olds 20 year olds mm -hmm. you don't know what you're going to get at all from them right if, even if they're going to play at all so right every team needs like a competent backup point guard that's what tyler is yeah like any team could use him yeah you know, yeah it's, but it's, i am happy he went to the knicks because yeah. i do think um well first off obviously they're a contender like you mentioned i mean i think the bucks celtics and knicks in the eastern conference final mm -hmm. or eastern conference next year are going to be the three teams mm -hmm. um really going after it and uh you know, I, what do you think about Coach Thibodeau? There's obviously a lot of talk about him. Not like he doesn't like to play rookies right. as much, and and the five guys that he has who start yeah. play a majority of the game. Right. I mean, yeah, Jalen Brunson playing like 47 minutes in the right. in the playoffs. Yeah, but I think like Tyler, you guys know Tyler. He's friend of the pod. Been on the yeah, been yeah, on yeah. the pod many times. <laughs> um, but you know, he's like a basketball junkie. Yeah. You know, 
Tom Thibodeau is the same way, just obsessed with basketball. I think they're going to get along well. I think yeah. Tyler's eventually going to force his way into the rotation just, just from the way he plays. And yeah, I, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's a perfect pairing, him and Coach Tibbs yeah. together. I agree. I agree. And we were just looking at their roster right before this. Um, I mean, they have McBride from mm. West Virginia, and he, he gave them some good minutes last year. But other than that, coming off the bench for them at the guard position, especially like running the, running the offense, the floor general, not a lot. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's it, it's a good area for him and and uh, you know Jalen Brunson's going to need to. He's got to come out of the game. Come eventually. out of the game, especially during the regular season. Yeah, so. especially at the end of the season, like he was running on fumes, yeah. like barely holding it together, his body holding it together. And yeah, yeah. And I th I'm sure Tyler will point out with all those Villanova guys that he went right. undefeated against Villanova during his time in Marquette. I'm sure. Yeah. Tyler mentioned that a few times. Right, and as you mentioned, this is a place he's had a lot of success in his career, too. Yeah, Madison Square Garden is probably the highlight of, the, of Tyler's college career, you know, winning Big East tournament there, mm -hmm. holding up the trophy, winning the Big East tournament MVP on, mm -hmm. on the floor. So, yeah, he's he, he'll fit right in. He's not far from home either. Providence is, you know, just a quick Amtrak ride away. Yeah. yeah. His parents will be down there for sure. Speaking of his parents, how cute was that video yeah. with, with his parents? That's I mean, also – the Kolick parents, also a friend of the pod. Yeah, yeah friend yeah. of the pod. Um, the whole family. The, the whole video was so sweet, and his dad holding back the tears oh, when he's hugging him. I watched it a few times because yeah. it, it, it did pull at the heartstrings. Yeah, it's very dusty, very dusty. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you guys know his dad is just, same way as Tyler, just a super yeah. basketball obsessed guy. So yep. just seeing your, your son reach the NBA after, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about Tyler's journey from overlooked recruit to yeah. overlooked transfer to now being an NBA pick, it's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and a little bit, I guess you could use the word overlooked, but he's been doubted his whole life. He thought he was going to go in the first round. Yeah. Doesn't go in the first round, and that just feeds into who Tyler Kolick mm -hmm. is. It's part of the whole narrative, part of the whole Tyler Kolick narrative. Yeah. yeah. It's actually, it, it's, might be, it might be a blessing for him that he went in the second round. I'm sure looking back at it maybe five years from now when he's doing really well in the NBA, I think you'll look back at it like Tom Brady does when he looked back at his <laughs> six round right, pick. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I know it would have been cool to be at Barclays Center, just yeah. to hear the commissioner mm -hmm. say your name, getting to deny that is, I'm sure he was pretty heartbroken about that, but I'm sure he'll, he'll use it as motivation. Right, sure. absolutely. We talked about this with him too, because just the draft being split into different days, mm. it's really tough for both of these Marquette guys who could have we're kind of on the fringe yeah. to know where to even be. Yeah, that that's the surprising thing to me too, especially with Oso. I mean, I, I followed it pretty closely all year in terms of following the mock drafts and whatnot. Mm. And Oso was mid first round, right. late first round, and and I, I, you know for whatever reasons he dropped out. And then you're like, okay, it, it, some mock drafts leading up to this didn't even have him going at all. Right. I'm like, what, where is this information? And, and you know, obviously all that stuff is coming from. Guys like Ben just putting it, just, just <laughs> throwing it out there. Just throwing, no, I'm joking. <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, how is Oso falling out of the second round here when they're taking guys that I don't even, I have never even heard of? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I was pretty sure Tyler, or Oso was going to get picked in the second round. He's just got, yeah. the physical tools are there. Yeah. I know people are going to question his shot and, mm -hmm. and all that, but just the playmaking, having a 6'11 guy that can dribble like that and mm -hmm. pass like that. You can you can work with that. Mm -hmm. So I I'm I was pretty confident he was going to get drafted. Yeah. I I, I was sure it was going to be in the second round because I like I said people are going to pick apart his game. They'll talk themselves out of him being a first round pick. But yeah. second round you can you can roll the dice on somebody like that. Absolutely. And I and I think he he landed in a really good spot. Yeah. Yeah. How does Phoenix? he fit in there? I mean, I they're right now in a in a weird situation with Kevin Durant and there was talks all week this week that right. I mean Stephen A. Smith. I saw him talking about how. Sounds like the Suns want him out, and the Rockets are a potential, and then maybe add a bunch of young guys or whatever. If that were to happen, I think it's great for Oso because they have a young team. Even if KD stays, they don't have a ton of depth at the center position, yeah. um, especially at the backup position. So, um, you know, I, I think his versatility, like Ben mentioned, is something that every team could use, and he doesn't need to shoot it. You got a bunch of guys on that team that could shoot it Bradley right. Beal, Booker, Kevin Durant. Um, he needs to run the floor hard, 
catch catch passes in the pick and roll, finish around the rim, and and play really good defense, which is he does. Yeah, their their roster is so top heavy with stars. Like yeah, Booker, Beal, mm-hmm. Durant. They they pay those guys so much. They have to fill out their roster with young guys. Yeah, and so Oso might have a chance to play, and he'll be playing for Coach Bud, our yeah. old. Uh, we know him well, yeah. familiar right. face, and exactly. he's an offensive guru. He can figure out ways to to scheme around yeah. Oso's non-shooting ability kind of like Marquette did like use him as a playmaking hub and mm. and you know take advantage of his, of his passing ability you know what I always find funny is that obviously like we know on tv that there's a trade made and he I think he was originally drafted to yeah. the trailblazers both of them both of them yeah they both were, of them originally you could say they were teammates, teammates for yeah. uh, a brief five seconds <laughs> <laughs> to me I'm like you know obviously he probably gets that he's so excited that he gets picked but I'm like okay I, I gotta go out to Portland right you know, like yeah, I'm excited thinking. Not as excited as I would be if I was going to Phoenix, my hometown right, team. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, just tell him, tell him he's going to the Phoenix yeah. Suns. I guarantee he's going to like have a huge smile on his right, face. Right, because also doesn't know it in that moment. Yeah, because he's not on his phone and or he's anything a like that. Portland Trail yeah, just had, yeah. talking to him about how are you going to feel playing with yeah, a nice young team in right, Portland and stuff. Right, I do find it interesting. It's They're weird. asking him those questions because those ESPN people know. Yeah. The, maybe just because it's reported, they just go with the. It happens pick. so quick too. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's happening like this and. And they're going down. I'm sure uh, whoever was doing the draft that night, I forget her name, but she, you know, she's Cassidy. probably got her Portland Cassidy, Trailblazers yeah. questions ready. Right. Yeah. And it's so weird. Like all the pictures you're going to have of your draft day, yeah, you're right. wearing like a Portland Trailblazers yeah. hat. Yeah. And, I mean, that's stayed back to Kobe Bryant when he had the Hornets, Hornets hat on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Stuff. Yeah. 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 I was even thinking that editing video last night. And I'm nope. right. And I'm looking at your story too. Yeah, it's like hard how to get you the word, wording. Yeah. It. I'm yeah. like, here he is at the Trailblazers. There was a ton of trades. I don't even want to get it. Who yeah. even cares? Yeah. Yeah. It's like every trade, he's like, God, yeah. Damn. yeah, man, how am I going to work? I got to like delete everything. Like, oh, man. I had the whole up. story ready to go. And now I got to like switch everything around, make sure the headline makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Question for you when you are uh, like watching the draft and you're getting ready to write your stories and stuff. Like, how do you go about that process and, and what are you looking for specifically? Is there anything or just whatever pops out to you? Yeah. I mean, I know those guys, their whole story is pretty well. So right. I have a story kind of written already. Mm-hmm. I just got to plug in yeah. the pick number and the team name so we can alert it out because people are searching around, searching for that stuff. And we want yeah. them to come to our, our website. Then after all that, I tried to get like something a little different. That's why I talked to Shaka last night, just yeah. to see he was there in New York and just to ask him about how they handled not getting picked on the first day and what it was like for him seeing his players get picked. So I tried to do another story later just to have something special that mm-hmm. not, like, everyone's going to have, you know, Tyler pick, you know, 34th yeah. and land on the Knicks, but I want something a little different. Yeah. Give people a little different insight. That's kind of my whole, my whole thing. Yeah. The coach sound, um, uh bombed that they were not first round picks or what was his thoughts on that no he he said the same thing yeah. that they're just gonna use as motivation yeah. and, right and they were you know tyler was obviously you guys know tyler he's he's a he's an emotional guy so yeah. i think yeah. he took it a little hard but um no i yeah chuck was guy chuck was a little emotional like he was yeah. just he was kind of like you mentioned he's kind of a proud dad kind yeah. of a proud dad moment for him yeah. How hard is it first year in the NBA? I feel like that's there's just so Oof. much pressure yeah. to make an impact. Like I even think of Johnny Davis, you know, yeah, right. he was he had so much expectation heading into the league mm-hmm. and um, you know, is still trying to get back to that point. I mean, it, neither of us have played yeah. in the NBA, but I, <laughs> breaking you news know, Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, you see it you see it with the last couple of Bucks picks right. we've had. Yeah, Mar- I mean, right. First round picks, not even uh, really haven't even sniffed the court much yeah spend more time in the g league than they do Mm -hmm. uh up with the regular team so obviously it's really tough especially when you're going to great teams and right now with the rosters the way they are with the knicks and the suns those rosters are both playoff teams from last year so um you know it's gonna be tough we're talking about it like okay hopefully they have a potential to play and stuff it's they could easily spend a a majority of the Mm -hmm. season down in the g league and that would not be unusual yes for a second round pick it's not unusual for a first round pick so um, it's, they definitely have their work cut out for them, but you know, knowing those two guys, I think they'll find a way. Yeah, I think Omax last year he mm-hmm. was a first round pick, and I think he spent twenty four, mm-hmm. thirty games down in the down in the G League. It's just yeah. to get some playing experience. But I think with Tyler Noso, this helps them being four year players. Right, they're physically 
mm-hmm. readier than like the Bucks pick. Like yeah. we talk about him being 170 pounds. Like there's no way he can play in the NBA next year. No, like, and he'll never he'll never play for the Bucks. Okay, let's get let's get. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I can't. Let's let's get into the Bucks. We'll come back to this Marquette team yeah. and what they may look like next year. But let's stick with the NBA draft and the Bucks. So they have the 23rd pick in the draft, and they go with AJ Johnson. I'm sure you guys have heard of him, right? <laughs> Just kidding. So. He played in the Australian NBL, 167-pound guard. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts? Yeah. Were you shocked? Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm shocked because the Bucks kind of have done that now a couple of right. times. Mm-hmm. But I, obviously being biased, I would have liked to have seen them select Tyler, not knowing what their backup point guard mm-hmm. situation is with Pat Bev. Obviously, now that they didn't take anybody, it probably seems like they're going to re-sign Pat Bev or another veteran backup point guard. But I thought Tyler could have come in and filled that role pretty nicely. You take a guy like A.J. Johnson. Um, A.J. Johnson last year was in some pre-draft stuff, and Brandon Podzinski, who was a friend of ours and mm. trained at the facility mm-hmm. and was working out with them. Mm-hmm. From what I hear from everybody that was there and whatnot is he's extremely raw. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously the, the weight, he's got to put on weight, and, and he's, I mean, he's at least two or three years away from being potentially – a uh, backup shooting guard at, at the best. And maybe, I mean, maybe they have hopes for him to fill Chris Middleton's spot eventually. But, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what the game plan is there. And to me, you know, the Bucks have now for the last three years completely put all their chips on the table for we want to win now. Yeah. To me, Tyler Kolick is a pick that wants to win now to solidify your backup point guard position. The A.J. Johnson pick is a, a flyer. And so, you know, especially from a guy who's not known to shoot it that well either, I don't really see where he fits in. Um, and to me, it's very similar to the Marjan Bochamp pick. Right. And now you're basically mm-hmm. just saying we're giving up on Marjan. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of my thoughts. I was disappointed in it as a Bucks fan, as a Marquette fan. But yeah, this is a win now franchise, right? Like the championship window is closing. Like yeah. Brooke Lopez is mid 30s. Chris Middleton's mid 30s. Dame Lillard's getting up there. Yeah, I mean, Giannis is 30. He's going to be good for however long he wants to play. But, but who knows how long he'll yeah, be here. Yeah, and they need as much talent that can be on the court next season. They need to put all their chips on next season. Cause, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah like Lopez's contract ends soon. Uh, you can look at it and say, well, we're betting on, you know, once those guys are gone, we need guys to fill out the roster. But, I mean, championship windows are so rare. You need yep. to put everything you have into winning it while you have the chance to. Yeah. And that's what that's probably what Bucks fans are most disappointed about. And and you look at that Pacers series, um, the one that we lost, it, obviously there was injuries that, that plagued the Bucks, but when we went to our bench, we're bringing in guys who are much older and they're bringing in guys who are in that 23, 24 year old mm-hmm. range who are picking up our guys full court. <laughs> they're, they're pressing us. They pressed us for a whole series, mm-hmm. which never happens in the NBA. Full court every time because they know they're trying to wear our guys down. Right. We take a younger guy, but he's not going to play. So now that's just a waste of a roster spot. And you go to your bench again. You don't. You know. You don't have youth to come in and, and rejuvenate the team. So to me, I'm like Tyler's that T.J. McConnell for the Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. and T.J. McConnell was one of the main forces for the Pacers that helped them push them past the Bucks and onto the next round. So it's like, yeah, I, I was a little disappointed. Is it the draft, though? I know you said you may have taken Tyler at 23. Yeah. Who is there someone else you would have taken if you were the Bucks? I mean, I know they well, said so Kyle. Keontae George went before that um, uh, from Illinois. Shannon. Uh, Shannon. Uh, Terrence Shannon, been, right? Yeah. That's another guy that could play right away next season. He could season. play right away, yeah. I, I, But also, to me, I'm like, okay, you watch the Illinois versus uh, Marquette game. And I'm pretty sure Shannon played mm-hmm. in that early yeah, on in yeah, the year. Yeah, you know, I mean – you watch that game, and Shannon played well. He had a good game, too. But you're like, okay, who's going to come in and do exactly what you need for the team? Like, right. Ty, there's a reason why Marquette won that game. I mean, so, yeah, I, I, I think there was a couple picks right before that that mm-hmm. uh, a lot of them were like, okay, we're going to take more of a flyer opportunity here than going with what's what's really there. And you some see people, that all the time. Some people had that Duke. Kai, Kyle, Kyle Pukowski, 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 who's yeah. oh my a whole other story now. That's story's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I tried to get deep into that this morning. I was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to wade into this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's crazy. We'll let everyone just go yeah. look go, that go, up. Go, yeah. go look Google that up Kyle yourself. Wait, <laughs> there's mom jumping in and his brother and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been yeah. all over the news this year. He went to the right team, though. Yep, Utah. <laughs> That's just, uh, it's insane. <laughs> so, and then uh, I don't know if you guys followed the second round pick um, for the Bucks, but Tyler Smith. He played in the G League, you yeah. know, 19 years old. Both both picks are 19. Yes. Both picks are young. Yeah. This guy, at least, he shot 36 from three, 36% from three, you know, averaged double figures. So, yeah, I don't know too much about him, honestly. Yeah. And, and I don't, and you don't care to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. He's not going to play ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can understand it. The second round, you could take more of a swing on like a potential yeah. guy, more so than the 23rd pick. You right. expect to get a guy who could play right away. Yeah. But I think they got to prepare eventually for the post Brook Lopez era. Um, yeah. So this guy, they big said. guy, could, a little different, maybe able to move a little bit better, better mm-hmm. than, than Brook can. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Definitely he's not playing next year. Just like the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The biggest news of the second round, the Lakers selecting <laughs> Bronny James. Let's just start with you're watching ESPN. I don't know. If, I mean, you you obviously are watching the second round. I don't even know if you were watching I'm it. Getting updates on, the phone. Don't forget getting your updates on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking without his microphone. Um, they're saying he's not going. He's not going to. Or if they pick him before the Lakers or Suns, he'll go play go overseas, Australia. Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, first of all, let's start there. That was an interesting thing to hear. Yeah. What, what do you think about it? Well, I mean, you got a guy who's got all the leverage, right? LeBron. Yeah. Like, I mean, what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna piss off LeBron, right? You know? So, uh, I think everyone foresaw this coming, and it was just funny. They showed the picture of the war room and the the Lakers yeah. war room, like they're yeah. googling around, yeah. like like we know who you're gonna pick. <laughs> you don't need to take the four minutes in the second round to right. tell us. Just to it, say it's Brian. It James. was so theatrical. I mean, I'm like, this is almost like a movie, right? Uh, you know, and they're in there shaking hands yeah. like that too. I'm like, you yeah. guys knew for months knew that you're gonna take yeah. Bronny. <laughs> and then there were so many good tweets too when that came out about. Yeah. Uh, 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 Paul, what's his name? The the agent, um, Rich Paul. Rich Paul, yeah. yeah, saying that like he was calling around telling teams not to take him, and everyone's like, GMs were like, yeah, no problem, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> done, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we got it. But yeah. um, you know, and also I don't blame them. Like, I mean, to me, like I'm LeBron James. Like, yeah, co- I want my son playing on the yeah. team, so we're gonna do everything possible to make it happen. It just to me, like when they go about it, acting like that's not what they're doing. Yeah. Just to come out and say that's what we're doing and that's it's the way it is and we think he actually could be good. So who right. knows? Maybe he has an opportunity. I know. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. He had a good combine. Yeah. yeah. I want to see him do well. Yeah, right. I feel bad just for the kid. It's just, I know. Like, I feel so bad. Much extra pressure. spotlight, yeah. extra pressure that doesn't need to be there. No. And he, and by all accounts, like I've seen him play a couple of times. He's a good player. Like he's very like as you imagine the kid of LeBron James to be yeah. very smart, knows the game well. You know, he's a little undersized for yeah. for an NBA guard, but but he's athletic, though. Yeah, he's too. athletic, but it's just there's so much pressure now. Mm-hmm. Just his game's just gonna be dissected every time he steps out on the court. And now it's gonna be interesting to see, like, okay, is he gonna be playing down in the G League? Is he gonna be brought up? If he's on the end of the bench and he's not playing, and the Lakers aren't doing well, like, yeah. is LeBron gonna be like, you gotta put him in? Yeah, right. He's gotta you gotta, answer questions about that. Gotta every, answer every questions game. about that. JJ Reddick's gonna answer yeah. questions about that. Yeah, new coach has to. And throw then JJ Reddick, LeBron's. Like podcast friend, like right. it's it just. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was. We were dying at Dave Portnoy. He he did a video last night just about like I feel bad for Lakers fans. Like LeBron runs so this, sarcastic. Yeah, runs this team. He has his podcasting best friend as the head coach. He has his son as the point guard. Yeah. You know, so he was just he's just joking around saying he feels yeah. feels bad. He just wants a rivalry for the Celtics. And to me though too, like if I'm like a diehard Laker fan. I, but I, I get it. At the end of the second round, you're not really banking on having anybody. But you're also like, man, this is bringing a ton of attention to a ton of attention that we probably don't really need. We should yeah. be focused maybe more on getting winning, winning. And, yeah. and now you have a big distraction. And but I guess that's that's L.A. in general. So yeah. I'm sure they're used to that. It's even. drama. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm already like locked in on their first summer league game. Yeah. It's July oh, yeah, 11th, yeah. I For think. Sure. So, yeah. For I sure. mean. <laughs> It's going to be fun to watch. Hopefully they play the Knicks and maybe they match up with Tyler. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. All right. So um, we did we did all the NBA draft stuff. Anything else you want to touch on from the draft? Uh, I don't have anything more from the draft, but I'd like to get into Marquette. Okay. Let's bit. do it. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, one guy who I see a bunch of stuff on, um, and I know a little bit about it, some of the insight because I got a little bit of some scoop, but Caden, uh, oh, Caden, <laughs> from, from Noreen. <laughs> friend, friend of the I was trying to say that without ratting her out. <laughs> And some of the coaches or whatever, but a uh, close source, yeah, yeah, his yeah. fiance, <laughs> source close to the program, <laughs> exactly. Um, but Caden Hamilton has had a big uh, summer, and even actually when he came in last year, I was hearing great stuff about him. Have you heard anything? And also, like, what do you think that he could add to the team in terms of replacing Oso? Right. Yeah, I've heard the same thing about Caden. Yeah. I've, I've seen him in person. Like, he his body has definitely developed yeah. after the the year off last season, the red shirt Shout season. Shout out Todd Smith. Yeah, Todd Smith. <laughs> Got to get him on the phone. Does anyone get more good pub than Todd Smith? Yeah. When yeah. is it? When's the, the next time someone's going to come in and get fatter? <laughs> and then we could really, we could throw nails at Todd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I think he gives, if you look at, you know, the big men under Shaka, they're usually like skinny, mobile guys. Yeah. Also, Kirk Queth. You can yeah. even go back to the Texas, all those guys that we yeah. mentioned that were NBA draft picks that were super mobile. Jared Allen. Yep. But, you know, playing in the Big East, you got to have some rugged mm -hmm. guys. And if if you want to knock, you know, Shaka on something the last couple of years, it's like rebounding, right? Yep. It's always, always been an issue with him. They find ways around it, um, but... It's nice just to have a different kind of option, just a bigger guy um, that can that can hit the boards. Yeah. Um, might be a, you can even pair him with like a Ben Gold. So it just gives him a little bit more ver, uh, lineup versatility, I guess. Absolutely, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing how they they go about that because um, you know I don't necessarily think he's I and I could be wrong on this because I haven't seen it, but how much is he going to be catching it on the perimeter like Oso did? I mean that their offense last year. Because Ben does the same thing. Right. I mean, he's catching it on the perimeter. Is all predicated around that. It'll be interesting, interesting to see what they do when Caden comes in. And, uh, you know, are they mixing it up? Are they throwing it down low mm -hmm. to him? I mean, he, Shaka's really never done that. Never, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a whole different team next year like, yeah. without Tyler and Oso. Those guys were such – I don't think people quite understand. Those guys were like, you know, Shaka doesn't really run plays. They were just making reads, right. and those guys yeah. are just like – so good at that yeah so it could be different they could run more set action next mm -hmm. season we'll see Absolutely. how it goes and and that's the thing too with their you know obviously they'll have a little bit different guard play you still have stevie mitchell and chase ross and cam and, and, cam and, and these guys who have been there a while in the, in the system mm -hmm. but um you know next year they probably have to ask more of uh trey and, yeah. and zade and and you know the freshmen that are coming in um you're probably right they probably will have to run a little bit more set offense because that that cohesiveness amongst Tyler and Oso is yeah. something that takes a long time to develop. Um, but, you know, I, I'm also, uh, you know, would you like to speak on Trey and, 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 and those younger guys a little bit? Because I've heard great things about them, too. Yeah. Um, Their the coaching staff super high on, on both those guys. I mean, they just didn't get a lot of playing time last yeah. year. I mean, you're playing on a top 10 team. Mm -hmm. You know, Tyler's playing 30 plus minutes every game. There's not a lot for for guards, not not a lot of room for for guards like like Trey. But um, Trey's like a super tough. He he he's got like leadership qualities. You could tell like people listen yeah. to him. He's like yeah. a natural point guard type yeah. of guy. Um, when he came in, like his shot was a little flat last year, last year, and I've mm -hmm. heard he's been working on that. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that. I'm interested to see how that that works out. Zade's another guy that's like super athletic. The, the and team boy, does he look! I mean, you see him now yeah. all of a sudden in the summer. He looks strong and cut up, and yeah. more so than he did last yeah, year. Yeah, the thing about next year's team is that they're going to have a lot more depth than they yeah. did. The freshmen are really good too. We could talk about them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Zade's like a super athletic, six-five guy mm -hmm. that that I'm sure is going to press for a lot of playing time. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting mix that they got. Yeah, where do you think they'll be uh, ranked in the Big East going into next year? Uh, the Big East, I think nationally, like they'll be like a top fifteen team mm. around there. So I think probably top three in the Big East. Yeah, uh, UConn obviously is going to take the top mm -hmm. spot. Creighton's got a bunch of guys back. Hawkbrenner's coming back, so yep. they'll, they'll they'll have a little hype to them. But yeah, Marquette's yeah. up there. Hey. All right, let's dive into you a little bit. Oh, geez. How, <laughs> how, how long have you been covering Marquette basketball? Wow, let's see. My that's seven seasons. I think my first season was. 2017-18. Cam was still a, a young man in his prime. Junior back year. Then. Yeah, that was Rousey's senior year. Yeah. That was the year that I know. I guess so that would have been my sophomore year then, I guess. 
Oh, well, no, because no, junior, no, junior, junior year and Rousey redshirted. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. And that was the year they went to the NIT. I know that wasn't the, the goal, but it was cool having those NIT games at the, the that, Al McGuire that Center. Fun, yeah. that, that, was, that was pretty cool. So that, that was my first year. That's How fun. have you enjoyed covering Marquette basketball? It's cool. It's just, it's interesting just to see the progressions. You know, there's the coaching change and people do things different ways. And it's interesting to see like the, you know, fans, especially the last couple of years as a team got to be like a top 10 team, like mm. the re-engage and the new energy around the, the, the team that, and the program. That's pretty interesting. I'm wondering just as a journalist, like how's the access to Marquette basketball? It's pretty good. I mean, like I'm the only guy that really covers them on like a day to day basis, like other people come in, but you know, it's uh yeah, it's college. It's, it's a little different than the pros. Like you don't get the open locker room. Right. There's not practices every day. So like you got to kind of, kind of work the politics game a little bit, but yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Ben's around though the, and the fun thing about Ben is like everybody knows Ben right. uh, the, yeah. and the players and the coaches and stuff you, you, you will have other reporters come in and you're like okay we, yeah. we might know the station they're with but you know Ben right Yeah. yeah. I, I think actually that's the most important thing I tell young reporters all the time like you gotta show up to everything yeah, yeah. like if it, there was like a be the difference NIO thing yeah. and then you're invited to anything that you can go to yep. you have to go there because like, like there's not that everyday access so they have to know your face they have to know that you're around yeah and that happens and then once you got that familiar face then you can like ask tough questions like after losses like i you know i'm going to be there after a loss i'm going to be there after a win right so i can ask those those sort of things i think that's that's super important i tell tell young kids that all the time yeah that's yeah. that's good advice do you have a favorite story that you've written Oh, geez. I, got, I, I was thinking about some Tyler Kolick stories I could tell you yeah. guys on the way here. Um, just because he's a, obviously a fun personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a couple of stories about him and his dad. You know, his dad was a super good player, in Division Three. He was the, the little least player of the year, and Tyler was the biggest player <laughs> of the year. So I wrote a good story about that. Um, yeah. Um, this is this kind of a, a, a good access kind of story, I guess. You know, Marquette kind of struggled early in the Big East season last year. They lost the at Seton Hall and then yeah. at Butler at home. You know, Tyler's kind of struggling a little bit. He did, just didn't look like himself. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and the next game after that little two-game blip, they I think it was Villanova at home, if I'm rem remembering correctly. And Shaka Kelly casually mentioned uh, – something as press conference after this, the, the, the game that there was like a, a big come to Jesus meeting with, with, with the star players on the team. Okay. And, you know, as a journalist, Carly, you know, my, my antennas right. go up. I'm like, Ooh, I gotta, I gotta find out about that. Yeah. And Chuck is like, you know, I don't want to say too much about it. I want to respect their privacy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think even after the press conference, I was asking Shaka like off to the side about right. some future story. And I was trying to poke and prod a little bit. I was like, who's it? What's this meeting? Who was there? What did they talk about? He's like, no, no, I'm not talking about it. I'm like, all right, coach, I, I respect that. But Tyler will tell me. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the next game was at Madison Square Garden, New York, St. John's. <coughs> Tyler played super well team looked back on track and I was like all right I gotta talk to Tyler like uh it's time I gotta figure out figure out this whole thing I went back into uh, to the locker room back there it was just him he was the last guy coming out and I'm like oh Tyler can I can I ask you about like this Shaka said something about this meeting he's like oh yeah we were at the Chick-fil-a it was me Oso Stevie Cam and I remember this story yeah, and I'm like so what you guys talk about like uh well, can I curse on this podcast? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's like, big. yeah, one thing they told me, like, I, got, I, got, I had to start playing like an asshole again. Yeah. He's like, I got to start being a cocky motherfucker again. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, thank you. Like, yeah. uh, I've got the story for the game. I've got a future story written here. I've got yeah. a little viral moment. And so, like, yeah, the next day I got to do the story about the this super secret meeting that, yeah. that that no one knows about yeah. or has any access yeah. to it. Yeah. It's a little inside, yeah. inside the locker room kind of story. So and and something Tyler would only tell you. Yeah, for sure. Exactly what I, I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know it too. And the, the nice thing about what I think with the, with the team and, and, you know, shock and all, they don't like hold anybody back. You know I mean? Right. You can go ask Tyler that and they yeah. know you're going to go ask Tyler that. And they probably know Tyler's going <laughs> to tell you. Right. And it's like, it's up to Tyler and they're not going to him and say, Hey Tyler, you got to reel it in, man. Yeah. Don't, right. you know, and you respect that shock is not going to give the details of their meeting. Yeah. But right. also unless knows. they want to. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Yeah, that's why I knew I had to go to Tyler for that. Yeah, that yeah. Stuff. yeah. I love it. Yeah. I remember that time of the year, too. It was at, so that was Nova at home. Yeah, I think that was Martin Luther King Day. It was like yep. an afternoon game. Yep, and we shot the ball like shit for three games in a row from yeah. three. Yeah, that Butler game was especially bad. Oh, man, that, that was like was I think it was like four for 32 on three of the yep. worst shooting game before the NCAA tournament game. Yeah, and even Tyler for that Villanova game shot it. Kind of poorly until they went out for that next game and, and yeah then, then, was, then they then they got back on track yeah so it was it was just kind of a weird blip on yeah uh, oh good to know Chick Fil A is the answer to everything yeah. yes <laughs> yeah, I think it was after a be the difference in IO yeah it must have been and then they went out to Chick Fil A and just you know had it out <laughs> oh yeah no it actually was yeah, yeah. all right Cam and on your uh, Mount Mount Rushmore yep oh, so geez. yeah I know I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit here Mount Rushmore of not it doesn't necessarily need to be the best players that you've covered, but the most entertaining, exciting, like this is a guy I want to cover, so I know I'm gonna have a story on this afterwards. Do you have like four of those guys from Marquette potentially? Yeah, well we gotta put Tyler on there, yeah, obviously. I figured we just he went through the reasons yeah. why. Um you know, I'll throw I'll throw Rousey on there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just seeing him pull up from twenty five feet, you know. There's a reason he was our first guest too on the right. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you remember that that senior game that his last that was the last Marquette game at the Bradley Center, right? And he yeah. pulled up for a couple threes from like, you know, the Al McGuire mark on the yeah. on the court. He was a little guy, like a loose cannon. Like mm-hmm. he wasn't afraid to, to say a few things, as you guys know. Right. Do you have any funny things from what <laughs> yeah, he just on. said? Yeah, come on. That was arousing. That was so I might not even have been up on that, all that stuff. I was <laughs> yeah. trying to hide from all that. <laughs> Cameron's yeah. lucky he wasn't front page and all this stuff. His name and all the Rousey stories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, can't, I can't remember a specific one. I, I, yeah, well, whatever he was doing, he was doing it by himself. <laughs> Cameron, Cameron <laughs> was not involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case Wojo watches this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, all right, Mount Rushmore is five, five guys? Or yeah, what is it? No, I'm actually, uh, I was thinking four. Maybe yeah, Mount four. Rushmore is, is, I think it's four, right? Yeah, yeah, so we got two. Yeah. Um, like, I'll throw Marcus in there just because, mm-hmm. um, you know, there was nothing like when he got hot. Yeah. Uh, you know, the 40-point half against Buffalo, that was That, that was, was unbelievable. crazy. Yeah. I still tell people, like, yeah. he had, I don't think he scored 50 in that game. I think he had, uh, he finished with maybe just under 50. Was, yeah. Or did he finish with 50? Because he had like three. That was a 45 game. Yeah. yeah. He had three 50 point games in his career, and, and that one he had 45. Yeah. But it was, in all three of the 50 point games were unbelievable. But the yeah. 40 point half, that was like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Against a, a top 25 team with Buffalo and Nate Oates was coaching Oates, their team yeah. and stuff. Um, I have a funny story about this actually. I just um, so Nate Oates, who's now the coach of Alabama, yeah. their coaches would wear uh, before the games like blue collar uh, yeah, shirts, and, and they that. and they had their names on them, like almost like a like a janitor would wear, and yeah. it'd say like their first names on them. And we're like, don't think anything of it. We come back into the locker room, and Wojo's just, he's pissed about it. <laughs> they're wearing those shirts out there thinking that they're blue collar, more blue collar than us, like, and uh, hard working than us and stuff. Like, so I was like, yeah, yeah, why are they wearing those shirts? And meanwhile, like, Nato, it's probably, it's like, he doesn't even have any, yeah. any inclination about it. And so I think we had, like, a kind of a lackluster first half. And I, I think he brought it up at halftime, actually. And Marcus just went on to torch these guys yeah. and just, we brought out their big center in a pick and roll every single time. And Marcus, I don't even think he hit rim. It was just net after net after net. And our bench is like falling over yeah. out of bounds. <laughs> Shout out Michael Alito. Shout out Michael Alito, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that, that was funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to um, throw, throw Cam Jones in there. Yeah. A, I think I have a little propensity for little small guards, I guess. So, yeah. Um, just got, I love the way he plays, just his, his touch around the basket, mm-hmm. you know, the English off the, the backboard. Um, that was another one of my favorite stories I've done. Like, um, I, I, I think I told this to a Marquette journalism class, like find like an angle on a guy and just dig deep into it. Yeah. Like you could throw like you for that story. You could do like Cam Jones, what's his, you know, field goal percentage going left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you could do it just strictly numbers, but you got to dig it. Like why, like, how did he get to be that way? Right. He's, he'll, he told me a story about, you know, being with his dad and his, you know, his dad knew that he wasn't going to be super athletic. So he had to like figure out these ways to get a shot off in the paint. And then I called his high school coach and he told me a story about, um, he would put cam against in the post against this six, five guy who played offensive lineman in some sec school. And it, 
practice couldn't be over until Cam could figure out a way to score on him. Um, so figuring out the ways, like how did Cam be able to have that touch around the basket and, and, and do that sort of thing. So I could dig into that, but that was one of my favorite stories that I've ever done. So just watching him, Cam, and the way he operates, just kind of, yeah, it, it's just interesting. He's just super interesting because he's not like a super athlete, but he gets his shot off against like Kling and he can get that shot off. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, in, and honestly, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm just thinking about it as you're saying that. I'm like, dude, I got to I gotta do that in practice, maybe. Yeah, do like right. A path. Yeah, because all, it's just so right. I mean, he's finishing below the rim, but it just extended out with, with reverse spin on it. Or you start, it's um, The way that he can finish is it's like almost unseen at that at that level. Yeah, and he gets it off against guys with like seven-foot wingspan. That's yeah. why I think he might have a shot to actually get in the NBA, even though he's not like an NBA-level athlete, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that he just knows how to score. He's got that scoring savant instincts yeah. that he's well, got. Well, tell you what, Cam is going to be, I think, he might get overlooked in the NBA draft again next year. And maybe, I, I hope he goes first round. I hope he goes in the, in the whatever. I just have a feeling because the way they do it, they'll, they'll do his intangibles and they'll see he doesn't have a 40-inch vertical or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he'll, whatever. I think he'll have a good NBA career, though, mm-hmm. because of exactly what you're saying. And he just has a knack for scoring plays hard and plays good defense too that was one of the things this past year i was uh you know it was really he's good to see better. cam was locking up on defense as well so um yeah I, he's really fun to watch I, i'm yeah. looking forward to next season and off the court i'm sure he gives you some good stuff too. yeah he's he's a he's a he's a little goofy personality yeah. too so he's got got a little he's not quite the the Tyler Kolick level F bombs. Yeah. He'll give you something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. exactly. A lot of people on that Marquette team have good personalities. When you said Cam, I thought Cam Murata oh, made your mouth yeah, yeah, yeah. rush more. Oh, yeah. I'm like, Cam, yeah, you yeah, made yeah. it. <laughs> it would have been, yeah. would have been a boring career for Ben <laughs> Steele then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Anything else? Yeah, no, I think we covered a bunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. We did a little journalism, did a little MBA, did a little college. Yeah, we had a lot of <laughs> lot of stuff here. Yeah, it was awesome. Ben, thank you so much for coming out here, sitting with us. This is it. I, I could check this off my bucket list now. I did the, the dinner table. Oh, pie. we're for sure having you back if, yeah. You'll, yeah. if you'll come. Yeah, crack open the wine. Get the yeah. we'll go will. deep into the wine cellar. We'll pull something out. We will, we will. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it.